Okay. All right. So, hi everybody. I'm Cal Vista. Uh, I'm a product manager at CloudBee. And today I'm going to be talking about CloudBee's Jenkins Enterprise, which is the flagship product uh, from CloudBee. Um, I'm going to be talking about you know, the, the journey uh, that the product has taken from the time we launched uh, last year. It's been about a year and a half since we launched it uh, to today and what's coming in the future. Uh, first up, let's, can you hear me okay? Am I coming through? Okay, cool. I can't see you guys very well because these two <laughs> bright lights are right on my eyes. So uh, if you guys are asking me a question, I might have to squint a little bit. Um, Maybe we should give it a minute or so for folks to come in and settle down. Maybe, okay. Um, thank you all for coming, by the way. I know it's been a long day. I'm right at the end of the day for you, so try to keep it as uh, short and sweet as possible. At the end, uh, we'll do a Q&A. Um, so, you know, whatever questions you have, I'll do my best to answer them. Um, cool, all right. So just before we start, uh, just want to understand, you know, you guys, uh, what, what were some of the most, in, you know, interesting uh, talks you guys went to today? Throw, throw some talks out at me. What, what were the most interesting talks you guys went to? Dev optics. All right, cool. Yes, that's a that's a good one. What else? Sorry. Say a moment. Libraries. Shared libraries, yeah, that's a good one, that's a good one. Well, hopefully after this, you guys will enjoy this one too. Um, so I'll get started. I think, uh, yep, we should get started. We're a few minutes in now. Um, so um, quick introduction to what you can expect out of this presentation. Um, I'm gonna give you a little bit of introduction of uh, about CloudBees for those who don't know what we do. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the personas and the problem statements that um, we, have catered to with uh, CloudBees Jenkins Enterprise. Um, by the way, I'm gonna use the term CJE, which is short for CloudBees Jenkins Enterprise. So if you hear that, I mean CloudBees Jenkins Enterprise, right? So uh, then I'm gonna talk about, you know, introducing CJE, what is it about? I'm gonna talk about the transformation and, um, you know, uh, the enhancements that are coming in the product that I'm very excited to share uh, today with all of you. Uh, and then we'll close it out with, uh, you know, key takeaways and uh, question and answers at the end. Cool? So sit back, relax. Hopefully you'll enjoy this presentation. Um, okay, so let's start with what we do at CloudBees. You know, so we, um, CloudBees basically enable enterprises to um, do continuous delivery right. Can you guys see this okay? Everything looking good? Okay. Uh, there are four key pillars that um, CloudBees, you know, we've focused on, um, you know, when it comes to running enterprise Jenkins. Um, so we offer solutions to essentially scale your enterprise Jenkins, uh, manage that, you know, uh, uh, the, the highly scaled uh, enterprise Jenkins cluster. Uh, we provide security capabilities uh, for your enterprise Jenkins cluster. And of course, we have world-class support that's 24-7. All right, so these are our four key pillars uh, of what we do uh, at CloudBees. So let's move on to, um, you know, the, the key personas and the main problem statements that, um, you know, that we are catering to with CloudBees Jenkins Enterprise. So before I go in here, I want to talk about, lay uh, the stage for you guys. You know, when we launched CloudBees Jenkins Enterprise about a year and a half ago now, uh, the product was called CloudBees Jenkins Platform Private SaaS Edition, or PSE for short. Uh, so it's quite a mouthful, uh, but you know, back in the day when we when we introduced the product, um, our main goal was to enable enterprises to run Jenkins at scale. Um, because as we talked to more and more customers, running Jenkins at scale, you know, enterprises were you know so a typical usage for Jenkins in an enterprise is you know you'd have a team, you'd have a developer. That you know, that's like really fascinated with Jenkins. You know, you know, she would download it, install it on her laptop, use it for you know her project, and then quickly the word spreads. And then you know, before you know it, you've got all these Jenkins instances cropping up across the different teams, 
Um, and you know, as enterprises start to think about you know, the shared you know, engineering services model, shared DevOps model, where teams are being put together to essentially own and manage and you know, maintain you know, your different um, you know, uh, DevOps tools, um, this, this shadow Jenkins cluster starts to become a problem, right? So we wanted to, CloudBees wanted to solve that problem. We wanted to essentially provide a turnkey capability to run Jenkins at scale and manage that at scale. Um, so as we you know, talked to different customers, we identified different, does that sound coming from next door? Okay, all right. <laughs> so I'm treading very lightly here. Um, um, okay, so uh, as we talked to different customers, we identified some personas uh, and you know, we've given them names internally. Uh, but you know, they, they run the, you know, the gamut here, you know, starting from the developer to the shared you know, engineering services manager. So by the way, if you're not familiar with the shared services team, this is the team that is getting more and more popular in enterprises today. So they're shared DevOps team, right? That's what that manager is for, right? So you know, this person manages that team that's overlooking dev tools. Um, so for context, that's what I mean. Each of these different personas have different needs. They use Jenkins in different ways. They have different expectations out of, uh, you know, your continuous delivery solutions. Um, and it's our goal to provide solutions that can meet the different needs, you know, that you see here, right? So I'm gonna get into some common problem statements that we've heard, um, you know, from customers just like you. Um, so I'll start with the shared engineering services manager uh, and the internal name we have for this persona is Simon. Um, so Simon's main problem is that he needs to provide a reliable, multi-tenanted, and easy to manage continuous delivery platform to accelerate the software delivery within the enterprise, but it should also conform to the security and IT standards within the enterprise, right? And especially if you're an enterprise that is highly regulated and you've got you know, external audit and compliance concerns that you will also have to meet, right? So Simon's role you know, in, in these enterprises, whether Simon works for a small startup or a super large enterprise, uh, the problem statement still remains the same. You, know, you wanna essentially provide an easy to use, self-service, continuous delivery as a service to Simon's customers that are mainly you know, development teams within the enterprise and you want that to be multi-tenanted and easy to manage and so forth, right? So, okay, that's, so that's a need, right? So we need a solution for that. Um, the next persona is, uh, you know, we call this person Penny. And Penny is, uh, and again, in many, uh, how many uh, enterprise, you know, if you guys here have a Penny persona today? So Penny is basically, you know, each team has a build and release engineer who's kind of like the DevOps kind of, you know, expert. Right, so this person is the one that's taking care of, you know, builds and releases for that project or for that division. She's the one who's essentially setting up a Jenkins master, you know, figuring out what plugins to use and whatnot. How many of you have, you know, have a persona like this? I saw a couple of, oh, okay, but most of you. Okay, that's what I thought. Uh, so for this person, for Penny, she's the build expert. She basically manages the Jenkins master for her team or for her division, and she needs the ability to you know, essentially the self-service capability. You know, I want to set up my own master really fast, download and install plugins really fast, and I want the ability to quickly debug and report um, on pipeline failures, right? Um, so that's an important, you know, ask from Penny, right? Um, Ada is a developer, um, and uh, in this case, we're calling, you know, we're basically saying she's a full stack engineer, and in her case, this is a common thing we've seen, and, and, and hopefully you've heard this from other attendees at, at, at Jenkins World, other developers just like yourself. Uh, you know, so Jenkins is very widespread. Developers love Jenkins, um, you know, especially the pipeline feature, right? So pipeline is getting, you know, the pipeline capabilities is getting adopted at a significant level. Um, and, and, and it's very useful for Ada to build, test, and deploy her microservice, you know, from check into production, right? Uh, what she really wants is basically a she doesn't want it, she just wants to focus on creating the pipeline and checking in her code and not having to wait for the infrastructure, right? So she's typically today in an enterprise, uh, may not be you guys, but you know, certainly you know, a, a large swath of customers that we've talked to, 
getting you know infrastructure provision for your Jenkins cluster is a non-trivial matter. You know, you maybe you have to go provision you know a, a machine or bare metal or a VM. You have to install the, you know necessary you know packages, libraries, tools, whatever you need. It could take days, weeks, you know, uh, uh, you know, in, in those enterprises. So she doesn't have want to wait for that. Right? She, she just wants to check in her code, create the pipeline, and then boom, the you know the CD as a service, the Jenkins as a service solution should take care of the rest, right? So she wants this truly black box, you know, fully automated solution. Uh, and then finally, you've got Ernest, who's the engineering manager, who's basically interested in finding out you know, get more insights into, uh, you know, what is happening in the team, right? So uh, how effective are we at uh, following the agile, you know, model? Uh, how quickly am I responding to customer issues coming my way, right? Uh, what is the quality of my, you know, my release looking like, right? So, so the engineering manager, and you can use this as a, you know, catch-all persona for anyone in the management chain, essentially. They, they want insights, you know, as to how the teams are performing which is exactly why we focused on DevOptics, by the way, right? Uh, but anyways, this is a big ask from the engineering manager. So we heard this feedback, this, all of these problem statements from these different personas. Uh, we spent some time thinking about, you know, what's the, you know, how do we solve all of this, right? So this feedback that we've gotten from people just like you is enabling us to make our product solutions better, right? So let me introduce CloudBees Jenkins Enterprise. What is it? Um, CJE is an automated solution that solves the needs of organizations by focusing on scalability, security, manageability, and resiliency, all of which is built on a cloud-native architecture, and I'll get into that a little more. Um, how many of you have heard of CloudBees Jenkins Enterprise prior to this? Okay, that's, wow, that's all of you. So that's great, that's very nice. So um, CJE, uh, the key piece here is the last sentence. You know, it's built on a cloud native, you know, um, architecture. Uh, with CJE, um, let me let me hold on to that thought. Actually, I have a slide that's coming up, so let me move on to the next one. Um, the some of the key features that CJE um, has today that solves many of the the problem statements that we just saw. Um, you know, it's built to scale. So scalability is not a problem with CJE at all. Um, you could, uh, last year, I don't know if you guys, how many of you attended last year's Jenkins World? A few, okay, that's good. Uh, we're, we're getting more attendees this time, that's awesome, thank you. Uh, but at last year's Jenkins World, uh, the last keynote, uh, we actually demoed uh, the scalability capabilities of CJE. Sasha went on stage and we actually demoed running a CJE cluster with 2,000 masters and 10,000 executives running at the same time. Uh, at that time, you know, that was the largest enterprise Jenkins cluster that we knew of. All of that was running in about 400 odd VMs on AWS. So scale is what we live and breathe. Um, you know, so scale is what CJE was built for. It's easy to manage. You know, running things at scale is not easy to manage, right? So you could have hundreds of, you know, masters, you know, thousands of executors running at the same time, uh, but if it's hard to manage, then, you know, that's fail, right? So we essentially have provided the capability to manage those, uh, you know, your, your, your highly scaled out cluster very, very easily. Uh, it's resilient by design, um, so, you know, uh, and this is what I meant by the, our cloud native architecture. So CJE ships with um, so in CJE, every component it runs as a Docker container, um, and the product is, sh you know, we, we ship container management technology, you know, in the product. So um, in the event any of your containers were to die, the product will automatically spin up another container, um, and whatever workload was running on that container will just move to the new one, right? So it's resilient by design. Uh, and then finally, of course, you know, uh, we take security and compliance needs very seriously. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of capabilities um, on the enterprise side um, that addresses the security and compliance needs, you know, starting with something like the RBAC uh, capability, right, where customers can essentially, you know, control who has permissions and access to your different masters and, and what goes on inside the master. Um, so um, a key 
architectural design component in CJE is what we call the Cloud B, you know, distributed pipeline architecture, or the DPA for short. Um, with DPA, this is the design that allows us to provide multi-tenancy in CJE. Uh, the, the, the next diet, you know, I have a, a slide coming up that kind of shows you the internals, so you'll understand this a little better. But DPA allows you to essentially, you know, have multiple teams on the same cluster without trampling on one another's, you know, queue, right? So you get project level isolation, you get, you know, a scalable architecture that lets you essentially provision however many masters you want um, at will, right? And, and again, that, that, that goes for agents as well. Um, and then finally, you get data level isolation as well uh, through the DPA architecture. Uh, this is the diagram that I was going to, you know, talk about. Um, so this gives you a peek into some of the internals of CJE as it stands today. And, and some of these components are going to change, so I'll talk about that too. But as things stand today, this is a good diagram that explains to you the different components of CJE and how it addresses the needs of the personas. So I've just hand selected three personas on the left. And then, on, you know, in the middle here, you know, is some of the technology and internals of CJE. So let's start from the bottom left there and talk about how CJE addresses the needs of the shared services team member, right? So when you download uh, CJE, um, and when I say you, it's typically the shared services team member that's going to install CJE now. So you would go to cloudbees.com, you would download the BIC, um, and then we would provide, you know, so CloudBees provides a CLI uh, where you could run a single command and you could set up the entire cluster on various runtime environments, right? So it gives you this turnkey provisioning capability where you fire up the CLI, you run a command, boom, sets up the cluster for you. Um, going up the list there in the middle, you've got the project team, um, you know, the Jenkins admin, the Penny persona there who, um, you know, sh like I said earlier, she's looking for that self-service capability, right? Once the cluster has been provisioned by Simon, she would like to get in, log in, you know, create, a, you know, however many masters is required for her project, install the, you know, different plugins that she needs. So she's really looking for that self-service capability. And her need is addressed by CJE as well. And finally, for the developer, uh, like I said a minute ago, you know, she, the Ada persona, she wants, you know, truly, black box CD as a service solution that can automatically scale to however many pipelines she throws at it, right? She's checking in her code, she's creating pipelines, and magic happens with CJ behind the scenes, right? So CJ is gonna provision agents for her on demand and will ensure that there is continuity to her pipeline. So it'll, it'll ensure that if there is any interruptions, the pipeline will just pick up where it left off, um, you know, uh, through our, you know, auto resilient feature, right? Um, in the middle here are the main technology components of CJE. Um, like I said a minute ago, uh, the application layer, and what I mean by that is the CloudBees operation center, the Jenkins masters, the agents, um, and today we also have an analytics component uh, which basically runs on the Elk stack. Um, all of this is what I call as the applications layer. Uh, this layer runs um, as Docker containers today, natively. So everything, every master that you spin up on CJE, every agent that you spin up on CJE, uh, including the operation center, uh, all of those run as Docker containers um, on CJE, right? Um, so there are three key pieces to CJE, the one, the black bars. Um, there are three key tiers in CJE that make all this magic happen. There's a control tier that is the main interface for the shared services team member. So that's the control tier is the one that provides the CLI. You could run a command to essentially install the cluster, which will spin up VMs on, you know, these different runtime environments. Um, and you could manage it, you could upgrade it, you could use the control tier for doing all of that stuff, right? There's a whole bunch of operations that CJE provides to manage your cluster. Um, then there's the resource management tier, which basically is monitoring and tracking all of these you know, uh, the resources on those VMs, right? Which VM has capacity, you know, say you wanna onboard a new team and you wanna create a master. So the resource management here is the one that's gonna figure out which of those VMs has the capacity to host that master or host a build agent that you're gonna be spinning up, right? 
So that's what the resource management layer does. And then finally, you've got the storage layer here that's basically handling the, uh, the persistence of your Jenkins home data, right? So this is, the, this is where the magic happens, really, when your master dies and we spin up another master and the data automatically moves to that new master. Uh, it's actually being done by a component that's, that's uh, sitting there. Um, so let me move on to the next slide now. Uh, I know you, ha you may have questions, so let's hold on to that until the end. Uh, so given what I've just laid out, you know, the um, CloudBees Jenkins Enterprise today has these different components. It has these baked-in components. Uh, one of the, uh, you know, uh, good feedback items that we have received in the last, um, you know, year or so um, in, 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 in with multiple customers using it and in talking to, you know, different prospects is, uh, you know, different enterprises have different requirements for, for setting up, uh, you know, CJE. You know, so when you're, say, you're a small company or maybe you're a really large financial services company and you've got very strict requirements or security requirements for, you know, what's allowed, you know, what can this cluster talk to, right? Or, you know, who has access to install this cluster? Uh, what sort of packages can, are allowed, you know, in, your, uh, in, in this cluster? So all of those, you know, specific requirements, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure you can relate to this. There are several companies out there that have very strict, you know, rules over, you know, the, 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 you know, there's a team out there that controls what is, you know, what a tool does, right? What's installed in it. They want auditing capabilities and all that stuff. So when we launched CJE, we wanted CJE to be uh, a highly opinionated product, right? We made, we built CJE based on a lot of the learnings that we have in talking to customers, you know, over the past few years. So, you know, it's a highly opinionated framework. When you, when we took this to this other segment of customers uh, where they had all these custom requirements, we ran into some friction, right? Uh, and, I'm, you know, I want to be totally open and transparent with you guys on that. Uh, but that helped us, right? So this friction item is where, you know, when you try to install CJE in those environments, we ran into problems. You know, we, you know, like uh, a typical, a good example, I was just talking to a customer just now before coming in, uh, was, you know, they were trying to run CJE in an environment that, you know, they, they, they even had to control uh, the, the, the commands, the operations that you would run on, um, you know, on CJE, right? So they would not give us permission to run even specific commands, for example. Uh, and that really, you know, got in the way, right? Because if we if we couldn't run certain operations, certain commands, then you know the product couldn't even get installed, right? So we had to take all of this feedback and then had to design and implement new capabilities that could address you know some of these concerns, right? So what I'm going to be talking about next is how we're going to be transforming the product and some exciting capabilities coming into the product in the in the in the coming weeks and months. Um, so we went back to our first design goal when we came up with CJE, which is we want every enterprise to essentially go from zero to production or think of it as check into production as quickly as possible, minutes if possible, right? What I mean by this is we want the tool to get out of your way. We want the tool to provide you with the capabilities such that you can actually go from check into production really, really fast, right? Um, so with that in mind, we have a renewed focus on making the product, um, you know, we, we, the three key pillars are, are themes that are guiding our upcoming roadmap, right? We want a renewed focus on making the, this product lovable. So it starts with a lovable experience. Right from the time you download and install the product, it should just look, feel like a, you know, slick, high quality, enterprise grade product, right? That's a huge focus area for us. Second one is making it versatile. And that's, that's exactly what I just described, which is you should be able to run this product and manage this product in your environment, right? We want to make this as ver versatile as Jenkins is today, right? The, one of the key benefits of Jenkins today is that it's versatile and you can run it anywhere, right? And that's where we, we, we go, we're trying to take CJE uh, to that place. And then finally, you know, we also want to make, uh, you know, bacon, um, you know, uh, make it insightful, right? So that 
management persona that I talked about, um, you know, really wants to understand, you know, there, there's so, you know, there's, there's so many people using Jenkins in the enterprises today that you want to kind of get above the noise a little bit and understand, you know, how is the tool helping you, your business succeed, right? So those insights and analytics is another key, you know, focus area for the product. And you saw that in the keynote today with, with DevOptics. Um, so I want to touch a little bit upon uh, the versatility aspect in CJE. Um, so some of the capabilities that uh, are going to be coming very soon in CJE, I think addresses the versatility, ver versatility problem. Um, so you, very soon we're going to see the uh, ability to, once you've installed your CJE cluster, um, you know, we're going to introduce the capability where you can auto scale your cluster up or, up or down, right? So based on usage, based on the workloads that, you know, that you would throw at the cluster, the cluster would automatically then, you know, can expand or contract, uh, you know, based on, on traffic essentially, right? So that's, this is a good problem, uh, very interesting, very challenging problem that um, uh, we're working on and is going to be in, in the product soon. Uh, and then secondly, uh, the, the second one, this install anywhere is a really, you know, this, uh, you know, I, I won't be lying if I say that this has been our main area of focus for the last few couple of months, I would say. Um, we want to get CJ to be as malleable as Jenkins is. You should be able to run this anywhere. You know, what, whatever OS and operating system you have, whether you want to run it on bare metal, on, you know, on VMs, on the public cloud, you know, private cloud. Uh, we want to get CJ to a point where, you know, you could do this. Uh, you could install it anywhere. Um, another big ask is, hey, um, I want to try out CJE, I want to start small, and then I want to keep growing my cluster over time. So can I r install the cluster on a single machine like I do with Jenkins today, right? Your typical Jenkins trial user has downloaded Jenkins, you know, on her laptop, and she's checked it out, and then, you know, and then, you know, maybe for the enterprise version, you know, you're, you're rolling it out, you know, on multiple machines. So we want the same experience with CJE as well. You, you know, we want you guys to be able to try this out, run it on a single machine if needed. Um, and then of course, you know, as you're, you know, as you want to get this to production, you can, you know, seamlessly expand the size of your cluster to multiple machines. And then finally, we want to get better at the self-healing aspect, right? We want to get better at understanding where your failures are occurring, trap those events, and then take action based on that, right? So our self-healing concept uh, we want to get make that better, um, you know, in, in the upcoming releases. Um, so, in terms of the runtimes that we are looking at, so today the product runs on AWS OpenStack, uh, and then in March this year we uh, uh, provided support to run CG on on vSphere, um, and then uh, of course the Docker as well. Uh, Docker, you know, is, is like I said today. Uh, all the you know uh, components of CJE, uh, they're all Dockerized uh, you know natively. So there's Docker support today you know out of the box. Uh, but what's coming um, is Kubernetes. This has been a humongous ask from all of you um, you know to run CJE on a Kubernetes cluster. Kubernetes is really becoming the de facto standard for managing containers today. Um, and we're completely aware of that, and that this is one of the key areas of focus uh, from the team, um, you know, today. I see Carlos there, and Carlos is actually championing um, big, you know, this this piece actually uh, in getting CJ to run on, on Kubernetes. Um, you will also, you know, we're also going to be providing capabilities to integrate with Red Hat OpenShift. Uh, again, uh, OpenShift is is a you know is a big player in the pass space and the platform as a service space and more and more and typically the larger enterprises are beginning to use openshift to manage you know their applications and run that at scale uh, so we're going to be providing uh, you know an integration for that as well um, we just announced uh, the um, uh, you know the the support for running cje on uh, vmware cloud on aws uh, how many of you have heard of this product by the way few of you that's good yeah so this was uh, this was a product that VMware launched uh, earlier this year so this is basically running the vSphere suite 
um, on AWS, right? So this is basically, you know, running your VMware solution on AWS. And we are, we've actually announced a partnership with VMware uh, where you can now run CJE. You know, if you go to the VMware marketplace, you will see CJE as an option. So you can now run CJE on this product uh, provided by VMware. Um, Azure support is coming soon. Um, you know, this is the next piece we're gonna pick up once we have got Kubernetes and OpenShift out the door. Uh, and then of course, you, you know, we've got, you know, built-in uh, plugins to work that work with Cloud Foundry. So if you're a Cloud Foundry user, uh, CJE supports that today. We've got, you know, CLI level integrations that, uh, that, that uh, you can use. Uh, and then of course, if you were, uh, if you wanna install the product on, on bare metal, uh, you know, the product supports that today as well. So what's coming is Kubernetes, OpenShift, Azure, and I'll also say this, you know, if you're a Docker Swarm uh, user, uh, we would support that as well. So Docker Swarm is another one that we, we are considering. Um, I wanna focus next on the lovable part, right? So um, the previous two slides focused on the versatile part of CJE. How are we making it more versatile? Uh, the next couple of slides, you know, is gonna talk about the lovable aspect of CJE. Um, you saw, you know, the keynote today where we talked about uh, the new user experience, um, you know, Blue Steel, right? So how, how many of you have heard of Blue Steel, by the way? Not too many, okay. Um, so how many of you have heard of Blue Ocean? Everybody, fantastic, good. So Blue Ocean, like, as you guys know, is the, um, new user experience for Jenkins. Um, have you, how many of you have seen the movie Zoolander, by the way? If you, <laughs> okay, so if you have seen it, you will get the reference to Blue Steel. Um, Blue Steel is basically Blue Ocean for the enterprise, right? It's, it's essentially the same thing. We're building on top of Blue Ocean for the enterprise, so we're calling this Blue Steel, right? So uh, a little tongue in cheek humor there. Um, but you know, so with Blue Steel, you're getting a, you know, a completely new way of visualizing Enterprise Jenkins right now, and with all the goodies of Blue Ocean thrown in, right? So you're super easy to create pipelines. It's super easy now to start onboarding teams, right? So with Blue Steel now, you're no longer thinking in terms of masters and agents and all that stuff. Blue Steel abstracts away some of those concepts behind the scenes. You would come into CJE the UI is gonna look like that. You know, you would basically go and you know, click a button to say, hey, I wanna create a new team, which would, behind the scenes, spin up a master for you. So all of the underlying components of CJE that spins up the master as a container, make sure that it's resilient, all of that stuff is still in place, except that now it is, that magic is now a little under, underneath the covers, right? Today it is in your face, you have to understand the technology and all that. It's complex to understand we're making it easy, right? We're making the product more lovable, right? So um, I will leave it at that. I mean, it's basically, you know, um, you guys have attended, you know, uh, some, some of the talks here that talk about, uh, you know, uh, Blue Steel and the new UX and whatnot. We have a, a whole pod, uh, you know, uh, next door dedicated to this new experience. So highly, you know, I would recommend come there uh, you, you know, we have a whole bunch of demos uh, dedicated to this new experience. Um, so I, I just wanted this to be a quick introduction and I wanted to whet your appetite to come next door, right? So please do that. Um, and then, you know, this, this is, you know, yet another slide that basically talks about, you know, uh, how easy it is to onboard teams. It gives you a cross team perspective. Uh, we still have those wonderful weather icons there. Um, so you're not gonna miss that. That's gonna be part of the new UX moving forward. Um, so let me move into another piece here that I find, you know, I think this is a very, very important piece of, of CJE. Uh, the CloudBees Assurance Program. Um, how many of you have heard of this? Great, okay, then I won't spend too much time. Most of you know this. Um, so the CloudBees Enterprise, for those that don't know, uh, so this is basically um, CloudBees, you, know, uh, you know, wants to make sure that the product that you consume, the CJE, um, you know, when you install that, when you create masters, the plugins that you install, we wanna make sure that those plugins that you install are compatible with the master that you create. When, when we put out a new version, we wanna make sure that the plugins, you know, again, there's a set of plugins that are most common across enterprises. You know, you've got GitHub, you've got 
you know, uh, Maven, you've got a whole bunch of plugins uh, that most of you use today. And the CAP program basically is a curated list of those plugins, right? So there's about 140 plugins, and that list keeps growing over time. Um, so there's about 140 plugins or so that's part of the CAP program, and CloudBees basically ensures that this set of plugins is compatible with the versions of CJE that we put out on a monthly basis, right? <coughs> and, and this is, you know, you would get this by default in CJE, right? So by default, you're all signed up for the CAP program if you have a CJE subscription. Next, I want to talk about the insightful part of CJE, right? So we, you know, uh, I think you, s hopefully all of you caught the keynote this morning uh, where we talked, you know, where Sasha talked about uh, DevOptics, right? And DevOptics is an umbrella term, like Sasha mentioned. Uh, there are multiple, there are going to be multiple solutions that fall under DevOptics. You know, there's a component called DevOptics Deliver, uh, and this is what you saw this morning in the demo, uh, right? So with DevOptics Deliver, um, the whole purpose of DevOptics Deliver is to provide you with insights that will tell you, you know, what's happening to your check-in, right? You know, give you, you know, traceability and, and, and this auditability, I guess, for what is happening in your team, right? So, you know, in this, you know, uh, slide over here, you could see that, you know, this workflow here shows you that, you know, your check-in basically went from, you know, is in the development stage. And in, in the development stage, it's gone through three phases. You know, you, you, you built it, it's going through a QA cycle, and now you've released it, um, and so on and so forth. So DevOptics Deliver is going to show you uh, this, you know, this, this insight or this, you know, this type of metric, essentially. You can see what is happening across your you know, teams at any given point in time. What has happened to your check-in? Where did that go? Who's tested it? You know, uh, which stage is that in? You know, which environment has that been deployed to? All of that stuff. So you can see all of that you know, through DevOptics Deliver. Uh, additionally, you could also, you know, with DevOptics Deliver, you would also get the ability to um, get insights into dependent pipelines. So, so say you've got a pipeline, and this pipeline is dependent on another pipeline. Uh, you could even get insights into those dependent pipelines. How are they doing, right? So, you know, think of an example where, you know, you've got Team A that is, you know, basically using a, you know, a platform component from Team B, right? So Team A is dependent on B. Team A wants to know when Team B has released uh, that component so that they can trigger, you know, their pipeline, right? So with DevOptics Deliver you can do that. You know, you could basically create these dependencies and you would get insights into how your different pipelines are doing, right? Um, another super important piece in DevOptics is, um, you know, a component called Pulse. Um, so DevOptics Pulse is basically catered to the Simon persona, the shared engineering services team, um, right? So they're the guys who are essentially super interested in uh, these operational metrics, operational aspects of your cluster. How is my team, you know, cluster performing? You know, where are the hot spots? You know, am I oversubscribed on my infrastructure? Um, things like that. How many builds are running? What's the capacity that's being used for that? All of that stuff. So that's what DevOptics Pulse is trying to solve. Um, I will say that DevOptics Pulse is a couple of months away from, I would say more than a couple of months. This is a few months away from, uh, from uh, hitting the shores. But this is a, a, a big problem space that we're working on today, right? And I'm super excited. I can't wait for this to come up, actually. Um, uh, this is, you know, yet another uh, use case that, you know, that uh, I was trying to highlight with DevOptics, right? It's, it's showing you, uh, you know, how many pipelines are running, at, you know, at different points of day. You can see the heat map, what time of day, you know, is there most, you know, number of check-ins. Very, very useful info, right? I mean. Um, you know, this would be super useful for, you know, your management persona, maybe even your developer persona. Uh, pretty much anyone in your team actually uh, could, could uh, take advantage of all of this uh, information. Um, so I want to combine everything and basically give you this high level picture of how everything is coming together, right? So in this past year, year and a half, we've really focused on the bottom two layers, right? Around web getting Jenkins to run at web scale. 
and you know, providing customers with the ability to manage your cluster you know, and provide you with the visibility uh, of what's, uh, you know, how to manage your cluster. You know, that's the operation center. But then all these other pieces are the pieces that are coming right now, right? So um, you know, we, we're, we're focusing on making it super easy to onboard teams and get productive really fast. That's basically the, uh, the new user experience. The blue steel piece is gonna help with increased team productivity, uh, support for additional runtimes. So that's the slide that I showed a little while ago. We're gonna be you know, making it easy for you to run CJE on you know, whatever runtime you choose. Uh, we want to get to a place where we can uh, essentially fully automate the elasticity part of CJE. So automatically scale up or down. You know, this is a big piece that, uh, you know, that, that our team is uh, working on right now. And then finally, we want to cap it off by providing you with insights and compliance, right? Um, the, so the pieces in orange um, or brownish orange here are the pieces that are coming you know, now. So you know, we've got DevOptics that's landing. You know, uh, we launched that uh, you know, uh, this morning. Um, but over the next couple of months, you know, I would say you can start to expect you know, most of these capabilities landing. Um, so super excited by all that. Um, key takeaways for me um, are you know, basically CJE enables enterprises you know, to, to use, you could use your latest technology tools and best practices to achieve continuous delivery. Um, you know, it, it also enables enterprises to unify your different processes across teams and business units. And then finally also provide you with security capabilities where you can secure your assets such that it can comply with your, you know, different IT standards, right? So let me pause there and then, you know, get into Q&A. Um, I'm sure you have questions, so uh, how much time do we have? About 10 minutes, I think? Yeah. Yeah, so the question was, uh, can I take the analytics that comes with the product and export that to a, another vendor provided solution like Tableau? Um, Good question, I can't answer that right now. What I can say is we are looking into capabilities where we can provide the raw data and you could then use that, you know, store that raw data in an analytics component. Um, whether we can support Tableau, that is to be determined. But what I can say is there is a plan to definitely provide the raw data that you can support, yeah, that you can consume. Um, so that is in the work, uh, that's in the backlog, right, so, cool. Yeah. Yeah, so the question was, is the Elk Stack still the, um, uh, the platform to store the data for Pulse? Um, so today, uh, that, I would say yes, the answer is yes. The, you know, we are considering Elk, the Elk Stack quite, you know, strongly. Uh, as the, uh, and I, I did, uh, when you said ELS, you meant the ELK stack. Didn't okay, yeah, okay. Um, right, so yes, the answer is yes. So today we are strongly considering that um, when we launch Pulse, most likely it will use the ELK stack underneath the covers. That could change, you know, over time, but for now, yes, the answer is yes. Uh, yes, the gentleman behind you. Separate question, let's talk about that uh, after this uh, conversation. But that's a good question, by the way, thank you. <laughs> uh, this gentleman, Pink, over here. Yeah, so good question. So the question was, um, you know, you talked about auto, I talked about auto scaling and if, you, if a customer were to run CJE, uh, you know, in a non-cloud environment, how do, you know, how do we enable auto scaling? The answer is we can't right now. Um, so if you're running CJE on, on prem, on say a vSphere based environment, um, you know, we would, you know, encourage you to provide the infrastructure uh, and feed that into CJE. That said, 
like I said, you know, we announced a partnership with VMware, um, you know, today, you know, well, a couple of days ago. Um, and we're looking at opportunities to integrate deeper with some of the VMware uh, solutions. And, and this is next, you know, we're talking about, you know, not anytime soon, okay? Uh, this is gonna be probably, you know, early next year is where we can start to think about integrating with some of the capabilities that VMware provides um, such that if you're a VMware shop, for example, we could use some of those APIs to start auto scaling, right? Um, I, I'm, it's very hand wavy right now, but that's the, that's the thought today. Yep, yep, yep. So exactly, so we, depending on the solution you have, you know, uh, you know you've got we realize, you've got we, you know, we realize, you know, VRO, you've got all those capabilities. So we could look at partnering with, you know, specific, you know, one of some of those products to make it easier for customers to essentially auto scale the, you know, the, the infrastructure piece. Uh, but like I said, I think we're very early in the conversation, so I can't divulge a lot of info. Um, I saw another hand being raised here. Um, is there someone else who, yeah, so let's see. Uh, someone at the back there? I can't see, sorry, I'm looking right into the light. Did I see a hand back there? No, I don't think so. Yep, sorry, go ahead, yeah. That's true. Yes, that is correct. Uh, so, uh, okay, I'm trying to figure out how to answer that. Um, so, I think the, the the way I want to answer that is this, right? So, uh, so the question, by the way, was if you've got a standalone master and you don't have the Jenkins Operations Center, uh, will you still be able to get the DevOpsX analytics, for example? Um, I, I would safely say the answer is no, actually, um, even moving forward, because the one of the key plugins that we are building uh, to collect all of these metrics is actually a CJOC plugin. Uh, so it's gonna sit inside of CJOC. That's the one that's actually collecting metrics from all the different masters um, and it's, it's, it's doing an ETL right there and it's providing the raw data that you can consume, right? Or in our case, we would feed that to Pulse and then Pulse will do the visualization and whatnot, right? Um, so I think the answer is no, uh, but, but let's talk some more. Um, you know, maybe there are other ways to handle, you know, your use case. Yeah, so CJOC is going to do more than just the analytics piece. So, you know, it is the single pane of glass view for all your masters. There's a lot of configurations like user management and all that. Um, you know, I can, you know, we're trying to get to a place where CJOC also becomes a behind the scenes concept and Blue Steel becomes the front face of it, right? So, Blue Steel is the interface you're, you know, you're in, and CJOC just happens to be the back end engine that's, you know, that's handling all of the requests, right? So that's, that's the model we're, get, we're trying to get to. So CJOC will no longer just be analytics, like you said. Uh, it's going to do more than that. You know, it's, it's, it's going to give you the ability to manage your different masters uh, and, and, and adding users and, and stuff like that, right? So uh, did that answer your question? A little bit. Okay. All right. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, okay, the question is, uh, what's the container management technology that ships in the product today? Uh, so today, CJE ships with Apache, Mesos, and Marathon. That's what we use for managing the containers uh, today. I saw another hand go up over there. Yeah, yes, sir. Sure, yeah, uh, so this, the question was, can you use pipeline as a release orchestration tool? Yes, uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. So when you say the shared pipeline, um, are you talking? I, I, no, I'm having a hard time, there's a little bit of a hum here. 
Yes, so yes, so, so that's the, the dependent pipelines, you know, slide that I was showing, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, yes, and uh, uh, totally. I mean, today, you know, whatever you can do with pipelines today, you know, you would do the same thing here. What this dependent pipeline capability will let you do is, you can now tie the pipelines together. You can now say that, hey, I have this one pipeline that's dependent on this pipeline, and this whole piece here is part of my release orchestration, right? So I would start with this pipeline here, Absolutely, and you know, and, and and if you don't mind, actually, you know, uh, we've got a pod next door again that's gonna that's focused just on that. Um, so I'm happy to talk some more uh, with you on that on that very specific question. But to your uh, uh, point, cross master references is also possible uh, with pipelines today, and certainly with CJE moving forward. So that's another you know possibility as well. Yep, this is a slightly better spot for me because I can see better. Um, <laughs> I'm in between the two beams here, so um, what else? Any more questions? Yes. Yeah, so uh, the managed master is, so the word, the term managed master just means that CJE is gonna manage that master now, right? The life cycle of that master is gonna be managed by CJE. The spinning up of the, con the container you, you know the you know the applying the necessary Docker image to run that master, associating the appropriate resources for that master. All of that is managed by CJE. So that managed master, that's what the term managed master means. Um, with this new UX that's coming in, um, you start to you know think less about a master now. You're thinking about teams now, right? So you're now saying, hey, I've set up this cluster. I want to onboard teams. So when I create a team concept in CJE, that behind the scenes is going to spin up a master. Today, you know, so this whole thing is enterprise Jenkins, right? So it's basically Jenkins at its core. And Jenkins today runs on a master agent model, right? So we have to have an ag a master and an agent to run tasks. So what we're doing with you know, this new UX is abstracting that piece so that customers are now thinking in terms of, hey, I don't know what a master is. I don't know what it's used for. I have no idea, you know, I don't care. I just need to onboard teams. And then we're doing the magic behind the scenes to spin up masters and attaching that to the teams. That's right, yes, yes. So the question was, when a customer logs into this new UX, will they see masters or will they see teams? The answer is they'll see teams, right? Behind the scenes, you know, they're, they're all masters but they'll start to see teams. Teams is the first level concept. Yes, one URL to rule them all, right? So you would come to this one URL to see all your masters, see what's happening. You're no longer, you know, you don't have to bookmark your master URLs anymore. You're coming to this new UX. You can, you know, literally go from team to team now and see the different pipelines that are running. You can add dependencies and all that good stuff. Yes, oh, absolutely. That's a huge piece of what we offer from enterprise perspective. Totally, we're gonna enhance that even more. Absolutely. Yes. Yes, all the way at the back. As opposed to? So, um, so for those who didn't hear the question, what if my enterprise, you know, we don't want to use teams, we want to organize, you know, uh, projects a different way. Um, can we park that question? Because I want to understand your use case a little better before I answer that. Uh, I mean, think of a team as just a logical grouping of people that have access to that project. So you can call that whatever. I mean, we just happen to call that teams, um, but, it sounds like I'm off the mark from with my answer. Uh, am I, did I answer your question or? Okay, we'll talk about it, thank you. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, it's in the works, I believe. Uh, but today, out of the box, you're going to have to, you know, yeah, you'll have to do that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the question was, is there a way to inherit the teams from GitHub directly as opposed to manually going into the UX and creating the teams again? Uh, the answer is today, when the first cut of the launch, uh, you're going to have to do it manually. You're going to have to onboard the teams. Um, but I believe, you know, we do have plans to essentially integrate more deeply with GitHub Enterprise and just essentially suck in all the teams from there, right? So that's, that's in the backlog. Um, so uh, we're actually doing early rollouts. Um, so think of it as a beta release. Um, you know, we want to essentially get your feedback. Uh, that, that's pretty much our operating model within CloudBees. You know, we do early rollouts of, 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 of features, get customer feedback, and then iterate, you know, uh, you know very, very quickly after that. Um, so yes, there's beta release is what I would say. Yes, yes. What else? Very good questions, guys. Um, that gentleman there that asked about the pricing part, we'll talk separately. Um, um, any, any, any more? The two folks I had discussions with earlier today, um, from Earthcast and from Every, uh, did I? answer your questions from earlier today? Kind of. We'll talk some more. If not, um, I'm right. I'm going to be right next door, so we can talk some more. Um, how was the session? Was it useful? You know, uh, not useful. OK, not bad. OK, all right. Thank you. Thanks, all. Thank you. Have a great day.